Hello, today I'm opening up Viticulture. This is the Essential Essential Edition, um, a game by Jamie Stegmeier, Alan Stone, and Morton Monrad Pedersen. Okay, so uh, it's one to six players, ages 13 and up. Says it plays 45 to 90 minutes. Okay, that's possible. The games I've played usually last an hour and up. Um, all right, so let's open it up. It's a nice, sort of smallish box, but it's deep. All right, so we have a rule book. This is, I'm guessing. 10, 12 pages or so, nine, 20 pages, wow, okay. Um, so it gives you the anatomy of each, um, for all the cards, all the pieces, where they go, pretty pretty solid rule book in general. Um, lots of illustrations, all right, so rule book. Now we've got a player aid um, sheet so here's your building um, reference, turn order, and yeah, so there's that. Here's the player board. Let's break this out. And the board itself isn't that large, so that's, I, I kind of like that. So there's uh, Zihi, there's um, this is where you, your spiele, um, your flanzi, I'm not sure <laughs> what those means, but anyways, so that's where you plant, you play and draw cards. Um, there are, this is a spot for your, um, vine cards, summer visitors, I think wine order cards, and then here is where the, uh, um, winter visitors come in. Uh, so the board, yeah, the board's pretty tight, but, um, yeah, only have so many workers to place, uh, Mercato. Hmm. Okay, that's the market, I guess. So here are the individual player boards. One side's in German, the other side is in English. Uh, there's six of these. All right, let's see. And here are your, uh, here are the six player pieces. Let me open up yellow, because this is the color I usually take. So here's our little worker. This could be a medium seller, uh, large seller. Um, more little workers. I think this is a tasting room. Big worker. Uh, here's a trellis. Here's your rooster. So here's your uh, victory point marker and your residual payments marker. So there's a bunch of those. I think every player should have uh, one for each. All right. And here is. A bunch of money values one, two, and five. Um, they're pretty generic, and they're, they're good. They're good cardboard stock. I don't like the metal ones actually because I don't know. They're it's it's just too much. It's just too much for me. Um, these are good enough. Let's see. Here are the um, like little. Uh, wine and what, what do they call it crush pad um, marker so you can place them there or there you know they move up and you can sell them off so there's a bunch of those here are the uh, different grape cards vine cards I guess okay so there's a Sangiovese Malvasia, Pino, 
This one produces a uh, one red and one white. It needs a trellis. Um, uh, Shara. This one's a two red. Needs a trellis. Um, Trebbiano two white. Um, so the art is fairly generic. Um, not really complaining about it. Cabernet Sauvignon. You need a irrigation and trellis. Um, there's a bunch of those. Here's a Merlot for three. Okay, so all kinds of uh, different grape varieties. Here is the orders um, card. So you need to have a level two white and a level four um, red to fill this one. This is three victory points. It'll give you one residual um, money each round. Here's a three red, three white. Um, let's see some of the higher ones. So here's a four, and this one costs um, eight red to get that um, filled. It gets you four victory points. Um, here's a five pointer, gets you two residual, needs six white and six red. Which actually, that's not too bad because you age those a couple times, um, your, your wine, and you'll get there. All right, so these are winter visitors. Here's a merchant. Pay three money to place one uh, red or one white on your crush pad or fill one um, order and gain one extra victory point. So caravan. Uh, these people look a little shady. I don't know why they make them look, um, you know, like that. But anyways, uh, here's an assessor. Gain money for each card in your hand or discard your hand. Minimum of one card to gain two victory points. Wow, he's pretty powerful. Um, here's some uh, marketers. Uh, let's see, guest speakers. Benefactor, draw one red or one green or one yellow, or discard two visitor cards to gain two points. So they're pretty powerful too. So there's those cards. <clears throat> so here are the win uh, the summer visitors. So planter, uh, plant up to two um, varieties and gain money, or uproot one and discard um, of. A plant card to gain two victory points okay so handy man he's uh he's left-handed you can tell uh, an importer okay a horticulturist or really hor horticulturists i'm guessing both of them are horticulturists uh, tour guide gain four money or harvest one field okay it's not bad so, um, mainly the uh, summer visitors, well, it, they also let you gain victory points. I thought the winter ones were more for that, but I guess they're a little bit of both. Okay, here are some more cards. Here's a bunch of mamas. Here's Laura, Nadia, or Nadia, or Naya, or Naha, Nikki. Rebecca Fallon so um, you'll gain two workers purple and two blues at the start of your um, game with her so uh, Danielle two workers two yellows and one blue all right Margo two workers one of almost one of each except for green so there are a bunch of those workers so there's cozy so it gets you two money, a big worker, and a small seller, or four money. Um, here's Jerry. Uh, you get a windmill or four money. Here's Alan. Ooh, a victory point or two money. That's interesting. Um, here's Raymond, a uh, seller or three money. So here is Paul. Okay. Here's Steven. All right. So those are the mamas and the papas. 
they don't sing, but that's okay. All right, so here are field cards. There's value five, six, and seven. Five, six, and seven. And one for each player. Here's the Atoma cards. Um, they interact a little differently. So here's that, and then the sold side. So, all right, so that's what's inside of uh, Viticulture, the Essential Edition. There's a lot in this box. Um, there's a lot of game um, for how sort of smallish the box is. Um, let's see, here's the front cover. Uh, they're putting grapes in the bucket, so that's cool. Here's a couple of people on the crush pad. Um, so yeah, nice idyllic um, uh, landscape here. So that's viticulture. Hello, today we played viticulture. This is the essential edition. We played it here in Springdale, Arkansas at Black Apple Crossing. So this was your guys' first playthrough of it. What did you think? What was your first thought? So my, my first thought is it's fun. It's, it's standard like work replacement and like game resources. Yeah. I appreciated that there were a couple of I guess levels like gaining resources and then moving them to a secondary like Right. So, yeah. so like a like a delayed response to the yeah. yeah. game. There's definitely a, like an extra level compared to like Stone Age where you collect. Yeah. Then you just evict your friends for like quite a while. Right. Um, so what you think? I think it looks nice. The film was very, very well placed. Everything fits well with it. All the mechanics and movies. Yeah, I think this good. Yeah, I love it. Nice to touch and play with it. Yeah. Uh, and the complexity, I agree. I, I think that is it's on the higher complexity side. Yeah. Uh, but it's, 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 it's still in that really ideal kind of range for me. It's not too complex for me just to give up and say, I can't figure it out. It's not too simple like Stone Age, where you can manage just there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. so, did you find it easy to learn? Well, I kind of, this is the game from my favorite designer. Yeah. So I kind of had this trust coming in yeah. that I'm going to get it at some point. It was kind of on the complex side. Yeah. Uh, so at times I was like, hey, this is confusing, but I'll just yeah. trust it. I'll just stay with it and right. there in the middle of the game. Uh, so yeah, if, if I didn't have that background with the designer and kind of knowing that this is going to work out well, yeah, it might have kind of been overwhelming for me. But yeah. because I had that trust, it just went with it and worked out fine. Yeah. What do you think, Dallas? I think it was easier to learn. I think the the theme of it actually helped. Like I, I yeah. feel like if you weren't familiar with wine and you didn't realize like the process of like yeah. going from grape to like barrel to aging, yeah. like, like that was, I feel like if we were just moving pieces around from like level one, level two, level three, and right. then victory point, like the theme actually kind of helped you know, with like picking it up, but only because I knew that this is how wine is made. Yeah. Um, I mean, even like the, the character cards, you know, I thought they were pretty thematic in what they did. Like I had one card that was, uh, it was either like a sort of like a shady architect or something like that. I can't remember, but anyway, he lets you build, you know, all the, anyways, whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, like from the grapes, like the different types of plants to the different characters to the types of wines that you're fulfilling, it, it all felt, you know, at least somewhat thematic. It wasn't, I don't think it was fully immersed in it, but you know, like, it felt like the touch was there and you could easily, more easily understand it because you're, you know, thinking of it in that sense. But, I, will, I will say that it was kind of, it was steep. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like the first two years, we were just like, okay, we'll figure it out. Yeah. And then I felt like after we played two or three rounds, I was like, okay, this is where it's at. This is how the game works for, right. for the remainder of us. Yeah. Uh, was there anything you guys didn't like about the game? 
I still have to play it a couple more times yeah. to make sure that what I'm thinking is actually right. But right. what I got from this just first round of playing was that there's a lot of fluctuations in the in the scores and the mm -hmm. points. Right. So like one round you might get if you're planning it right, you might actually have like ten or twelve points. Yeah. But that also depends on the other players not winning the game. Yeah. Just the year before you're kind of prepared to go all in and right. win it all. Uh, so that part of it is kind of make it I mean it's still fair, you know, you you can still see how every other player is is, is doing yeah uh, but it, it's still very kind of high risk in my opinion uh, you plan to kind of gain eight points next round and just win the game yeah but the other player just scores six in this round yeah. just finishes it this round so you can't really do anything. that part of it felt kind of like to me this first game just finished very abruptly and suddenly right yeah i won and i wasn't prepared to win <laughs> i didn't I, I wasn't sure yeah but then just it turned out that i had just enough to do right it, like, so. and this this one's kind of nifty and it, you know you won um that's perfectly fine but you know having the grande worker block um you know a spot and, and prevent another player from yeah. winning it's it's minor you know and it's all within the rules, but also I found that sort of like I don't know. There there might have been a slightly more um, friendly way to implement that rule, you know. But it, it was very you know situational. Last turn, block somebody, you know. But anyways, that's that's really minor. Um, was there anything you found kind of? Walking. So, so as the as the person who came in and left, <laughs> um, I I think to build on your point, I think it, it would be maybe a little bit more accessible if there weren't actually um, like space restrictions for each function. So right. like there could always be a bonus for being the first person to take that action. Yeah. But like limiting it, it makes it slightly more competitive. You could, right. Like you could ramp up and you could do things a little faster if it was a unlimited placement, unlimited, yeah. right? With the exception of like only the first player gets the bonus or the grand day yeah. worker gets the bonus. I think you could move it along. I did, I did find as the person who did not educate any additional workers <laughs> that I was definitely at a disadvantage in the, the last round. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I felt like um, you kind of have okay the the turn. Um, depending on how many players there are, with five player, we played with five players, and once it got back around to me, that was sort of the beginning of the end game. Like I had to really be within striking distance to the end, um, you know, or prepare for that. And if you're on the, I guess, the, you know, the opposite side of me, the third player, um, that could feel a little bit like. You could feel a little powerless because once it got back to me, I, I knew to be the first player, like to take the you know first turn and if, on that year, so that I can do these things and you know not have to worry about um, you know whether there's enough room or things like that. Um, so I, maybe that's also kind of like overthinking it, but I felt like if you are in the first or second, and once it got got back around to you, you're, you know, in a good spot. You've got a slight advantage mm -hmm. against other players. Yeah, I, do. I, I think the thing that adds to to this for me is, again, back to the scoring and the scale of it. Yeah. It's just, you don't have that much range, like the wiggle room to mm -hmm. kind of, if you're not like the first player yeah. or you don't go first uh, to pick your kind of the order. Uh, it could put you in a real, really bad disadvantage if it's later mm -hmm. uh, during the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, it's kind kind of building on your kind of building your engine, and, you know, preparing to win the game because of like the number of points that's needed to win the game. I, yeah. I think it just kind of narrows it down. Like you have to be very precise, and you have to know with a really, really high probability of right. what cards your opponents might have. Right. Should I score points this round or should I keep them and score more points, try to score more points on the next round? Um, I, I think just the scoring scale doesn't let you kind of 
uh, air on one side or the other. You have to be very, very careful. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, yeah. All right. So, any final thoughts? I think it's you know, once you get a couple of years under your belt, it, you pick it up and you can kind of understand like where it's funneling you to. You know, like you're gonna try to fill these orders as the main way to end the game at the right time or like win the game. So, it would be good to play it again, like yeah. relatively soon. With the, yeah. Like we we also had a long wrap up period because four of us were new. Yeah. So like. Yeah, and I was kind of shaky at the rules, so there was a lot of uh, looking at the rule book and you know verifying. But yeah, 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 I definitely enjoy the game so much, so that I definitely want to play it again, give it a yeah. shot, yep. even though I still don't know when to you know, invest on the engine, mm -hmm. when to start kind of getting the benefits of the engine that I built and everything. But I would definitely give it a shot, play it a couple more times to figure those stuff out, and yeah. I think once I figure it out, I would enjoy it even more, I would want to play it even more at that point once I figure out uh, what's the best strategy. Yeah. Very good. Alright, so that's Viticulture. That's the Essentials Edition.